Hello, welcome. My name is Dr. Mark Pimentel. I'm Director of GI Motility at Cedar sinai Medical Center. I'm here today to talk to you about some new revelations in irritable bowel syndrome. There's been a dramatic change over the last 15 years. What I'd like to tell you about today is a new sequence that leads to the pathophysiology of IBS. We believe it now all starts from acute gastroenteritis. It does this through a cascade of events. We now know based on new research in animals and in humans that this food poisoning or these bugs have a toxin called cytolethal distending toxin, otherwise known as CDTB. The toxin then creates a situation where you react to the toxin with antibodies. The antibodies are then circulating in and around the bloodstream, but they also are fooled to detect a protein on the nerves of the gut. This protein is called vinculin. This autoimmunity affects the function of the gut and that loss of function leads to the buildup of bacteria. Bacterial overgrowth is a concept where the colon bacteria have migrated into the small intestine and is due to stasis or poor motility in the small intestine. In animal studies, there's now been a link between food poisoning and the development of bacterial overgrowth with a phenotype in animals very similar to humans. We can now connect these two theories. This makes IBS an antibiotic responsive disease. But there's more. Irritable bowel syndrome may now be diagnosed using these antibodies. And using a new test, measuring both the antibodies to anti-CDTB and the antibodies to vinculin, we can actually detect irritable bowel syndrome. With these new biomarkers, IBS can be confidently diagnosed and separating diarrhea predominant IBS from other causes of diarrhea such as inflammatory bowel disease or celiac disease. But now what does this mean for your patients? I would say the single most important point is that the patient can walk away with a diagnosis and say that I actually have a disease that it is not caused by a psychological problem. This test may allow them to get a diagnosis early and move on to proper therapy. We're very excited about these new developments and hope this test will evolve in the future to even include patients with constipation predominant IBS and even mixed irritable bowel syndrome. The world of IBS is changing. And finally, we have some new answers that may provide patients with confidence and doctors with confidence that irritable bowel syndrome exists and is a real disease.